Good morning from Seattle, everybody. Uh, I'm sitting in the Grand Hyatt Hotel in downtown Seattle. Um, it is uh, 10 to 7 in the morning here, which means it's 10 to 10 in, uh, in London. And we're going to talk a little bit about periodicals today. The slideshow is in two parts. This is part one. Uh, which I have I've divided it up for easier uh, uh, encoding and uh, transmission to the website and we're going to talk about periodicals the first part is going to talk about some of the general issues surrounding periodicals and then the second part will talk about some of the particular issues you uh, deal with at different stages of the description so here we go a serial, to remind you, uh, is defined by RDA as a resource that is issued in successive parts. So it comes one part, then another part, then another part, then another part. It usually bears numbering of some kind. Uh, the numbering usually isn't semantically very meaningful, but it is a way of ensuring that the volumes or the parts are kept in some kind of predictable sequence, which is usually very important for location, uh, because usually somebody is looking for something within those parts and they need to be able to find a particular part and uh, sequence is usually the best way. It's also defined as a resource that has no predetermined conclusion, and that distinguishes it from a multi-volume work in the sense that uh, uh, an encyclopedia may uh, have a predetermined uh, number of volumes, but a serial typically starts and unless, for all we know, it's going to go on forever. Traditional examples are a print or electronic journal, a print or electronic newspaper, or a monographic series. Now, uh, back when I first started cataloging, I always assumed that uh, series were going to uh, disappear, uh, that uh, websites were going to take over from um, serials, and that this particular notion of something which happens in successive parts was going to disappear in the new information world. I turned out, turns out I was wrong. Uh, weblogs uh, are an example of a case where the principle of sequence continues to be a vital and important part of, uh, of uh, web life. And so the concept of the serial uh, continues to be relevant and uh, continues to be worth looking at. Now a few things to remember when you are cataloging a serial. It's fundamentally different in many ways from cataloging a, uh, an individual document like a book or a uh, a cassette tape or a uh, DVD. First of all, remember that you're cataloging a sequence, not just the individual items in the sequence. You're therefore describing something that applies to the entire whole. Uh, that means that you have to be careful in some ways about uh, confining your description to things which apply to everything in the sequence, not to be just to the individual item you're holding. The second thing is you're describing not just the artifacts, but the principle whereby new artifacts are added to the existing ones. So you're describing not just the things, but how often do the things appear? Uh, how are new things added to the old things? And then finally, in most serial publications, at least up until now, no one issue holds prominence over the others. And this is a tricky thing when you're cataloging a serial. If you're cataloging an individual issue of a journal, uh, that issue holds no prominence over the others. You can't say that this is the, uh, this is the chief issue, or this is the uber issue, or this is the issue that matters more than everything else. You're simply using it as an example of something which uh, occurs all over the place. This is very disorienting for those of us who are used to looking for the title page of a book, and you have a sense that you've arrived at some sort of grand central station of uh, 
of cataloging where you're, uh, the information here is uh, describing the entire thing. The information you're using usually describes just that one issue, but you're using it as an example of what is being described for everything. When you're cataloging serials, uh, there are some additional data elements you have to be aware of. The two that are most important are the numbering of the serials, which occur at RDA 2.6, and frequency, which occurs at RDA 2.14. You will also ha should also be aware of uh, the note on the numbering of serials at 2.20.5 and the note on frequency at 2.20.12. You use these if there's anything unusual or strange or weird about the serials that you need to uh, make the user aware of. The basis for the description in the case of serials is the lowest numbered issue or part. The idea here is that you start as much as you can from the beginning and you use that description at the beginning to describe everything that's going to come after. Now if you haven't based your description on the lowest numbered issue, make a note identifying the issue used as the basis for the description. Now an important thing to remember here is that when you are describing a serial, you are not describing only the issues that you have in your library. So if you started your subscription uh, further on into the life of the journal, let's say you decide to pick us pick up a subscription to uh, the Journal of the American Society for Information Science and Technology, for instance, and you pick up, the, uh, you pick up your subscription. The first issue that arrives is, is uh, say, volume 52, number 7. The journal itself didn't start there. Your subscription started there. What you are describing is the earliest issue of that journal, whether you have it or not. So you're not describing your holdings. That comes later in, a, in the MARC records. What you're describing is the journal itself and its lowest numbered issue or part available. The preferred source of information. As a serial issued in a sequence of pages, uh, the preferred source of information is the title page, title sheet, or title card, or image thereof, of the first issue. Now this raises a problem. What is the title page? Well, traditionally, the title page of a serial was the monograph title page of the first volume of the series. Not the first issue, the first volume. Second, the title page of a serial typically is a page that has only the title and not the table of contents or the editorial information. What does this mean? Well, in order to understand what this means, we have to take a bit of a journey back through time and talk about the way in which serials were traditionally issued. In days of yore, and in fact in current days in some cases, a journal was issued in a set of issues or numbers, right? And throughout a particular period of time, usually a year, uh, these issues came at set intervals. So you would, if it was a quarterly journal, you'd get a, uh, a, uh, a winter, a spring, a summer, and a fall issue. These were subsequently bound together into a volume, typically at yearly intervals. Now, during the year, the individual issues would sit on periodical shelves and then at the end of the year when the last issue came together with the last issue you would get the title page for the volume which would be the title page and typically the table of contents for all of the issues that were uh, that had come out that year the library would use that title page when it sent all of those issues to be bound into a volume for shelving on the regular shelves. What this means is, typically the preferred source of information would come with the final issue of the year rather than the first one. 
So according to traditional cataloging wisdom, the chief source of information in AACR2 terms, or the preferred source in RDA, would be the title page that comes with the last issue of the year. Think about this in practical terms. It is very unlikely that you are going to be using the preferred source of information when you are actually cataloging a journal. So, assuming that you don't have this precious title page that appeared with the last issue of the volume, what do you use? Well, you have what I like to call in cataloging a slide of desperation, which is what my facetious term for a list of sources that you use in descending order of preference if the preferred one isn't available. So if the, if the monograph title page of the first volume is not available, then take the issue that you're cataloging and go first to the cover. If the cover is not available, such as in a, uh, in a newspaper, then you go to the caption. The caption is the text that appears at the top of the first page, which is most common in newspapers. Failing that, go to the masthead, which is the text that gives the editorial information, and failing that, go to the colophon, which is data which appears at the end of the publication. This is fairly rare in, um, in uh, English language publications, but it's quite common in uh, other, other uh, publications in other languages.